What's up once again everybody, Monkey Dude 22 here for another Let's Play series. This time we're going to do the whole Disney Afternoon Collection. That's DuckTales 1, DuckTales 2, Chippendale Rescue Rangers 1, Chippendale Rescue Rangers 2. We also have Darkwing Duck and Tailspin, so it should be a lot of fun. Today we're going to do DuckTales, so let's go ahead and get started with that one here. Now, this is the first time I've played this game in a long time. I've done DuckTales Remastered recently, so I'm pretty, pretty hip on to how the game's going to play. But uh, just to show you, it's got, you know, Duck and Tails, uh, Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers 1, Tailspin, Darkwing Duck, DuckTales 2, and of course Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers 2. All in that order. It has all these cool different time attack modes, boss mode, boss rush, as sometimes it's called in the, in the uh, time trial circuits or stuff like that. So let's go ahead and do DuckTales 1 and uh, see how this goes here. All right, so I'm going to do my best not to use the rewind button here. It's been so long since I played this. I'm just going to do easy just because I don't want it to be too crazy difficult. But uh, it should be interesting to play it uh, using the Xbox One controller here, you know, as opposed to using like the 8-bit NES controller here. Uh, there is some interesting controllers coming out uh, from a bunch of different companies that are meant for like the retro games. So it should be interesting. Where should we start? Should we do Amazon, Transylvania, the Mines, Himalayas? Or the moon. Well, let's just go down the list. Let's start with the Amazon. So, all right, here we go. Look at that classic feel. Holy cow! Here we go. Uh oh. Off to a not a not a decent start, but here we go. Bounce on those gorillas. Boom. Now, the, of course, the uh, the interesting thing about this game is, of course, the pogo bouncing mechanic. Because I mean, Scrooge McDuck, you know, he's an older guy, so. How is he going to kill all these different enemies? Well, of course, it's Kane, you know. Why not bounce around, too? But it's uh, cool to use because you get to a lot of hidden areas, and I'll show you like that here in just a second. Like, typically, you can't jump up on this thing here, but if you just whack this little, uh, I don't know, thimble, something like that, with the pogo stick, you can jump up and go all the way over. And you can find some hidden areas over here, like some treasure. Of course, the big thing about this game is to collect all of the treasures in the game. Uh, not necessarily these small things, but uh, the uh, the bigger treasures at the end of each of the different stages. Uh, but yeah, here's another area right here. Bam! Get another one right there. It's a million dollar diamond right there. Scrooge is loaded. Alright, let's go through. And I think I'll go back up. There's a lot of spikes and stuff like that on the lower part. Not really too interesting. There we go. The M, I don't know what that necessarily means, but... If you've played DuckTales Remastered, uh, in this stage, there's a lot of different treasure pieces that you're supposed to get uh, that's going to actually uh, kind of complete different missions before you can actually finish the game. They don't have those in the 8-bit version, so this is kind of one of those remix things that they did. But, uh, yeah, it was kind of cool that they did that in the remaster to kind of freshen it up a little bit. Get over here. Bam! Haha. <laughs> get off that snake. All right, let's see if I can get up on that treasure chest. Ah, missed it. And then usually you can hit the different treasure chests with the rocks and things like that. Uh, they kind of make it a little bit easier with some of the things you can use in the worlds to kind of destroy them. Uh, watch out for the bees. Get up and go. Uh-oh. Ah, of course he hit me. Alright. Like I said, I'm trying not to use the uh, rewind feature, which is a different feature here in the game. Uh, that, of course, wasn't there in the end. They added it because, of course, uh, you know, a lot of gamers today aren't hip on the 8-bit generation and how challenging these games were. Uh, that's why it's crazy to have like easy, normal, difficult... Uh-oh, got hit right there, I gotta pay more attention. But, uh, you know, they kind of have that option there, just in case you want to uh, uh, get through the game a little bit easier. Oh no! Yep, they even have the, uh, <laughs> the old uh, screen drag from back in the day. Uh, typically in 8-bit games, or at least NES games from what I remember, if there were so many characters on the screen or so much action, it essentially would um, slow down the screen and kind of have a screen tear effect. And then some of the enemies might even go invisible as well. Uh, that's Launchpad. He'll take me back over to Duckburger if I want to, but I don't want to do that right now. Oh, get out of there. Boom. I got a diamond. Ooh. Get him. Yeah, I gotta watch out that I don't get hit here because... Uh, this could kill me, and of course I don't want to die right away. Oh, jeez. Oh, God. Get through. <laughs> Whoa, jeez. Oh, no. I got hit right there, but to have one more hit left, 
All right, so I can pay three, 300,000 to pass through here, or here's a trick. I have 300, let's see, yeah, 300 to 16,000, but I can also do this. I can bring this guy over here and just bounce on his head and go right up. Don't have to pay the 300,000. Sucks to be him. Defeat, use your cane to defeat the treasure keepers. I'm hoping to find some food in here. All right, there's a one up. I guess that's helpful, but I need a, I need some food. Oh, geez. Of course, I goofed that up. I'm just going to rewind here. Screw it. All right, let's go. Oh! Yeah, because if you die, you essentially have to go back to the uh, beginning of the uh, stage and do it all over again. And I'm not really too interested in doing that. I'm sure you don't want to see me go through the whole stage again if I die, so we'll just go ahead and roll with it. Boom! And there's the treasure chest. And we are done with the first level, so... Now we get to go back to Duckburg and see how much uh, money we've gotten, and uh, we'll move on to the next one. All right. 1,391,000, not too shabby, not too shabby payday for getting through the Amazon. Uh, next on the list is Transylvania, so let's go ahead and do that. Now the interesting thing about Transylvania is that they have these magic mirrors that you have to go through. And uh, all the magic mirrors would take you to different portions of this mansion. Um, and some of them are fairly easy to get to, some of them aren't. So this one you can't go through just yet. More on that in a little bit later. Oh. There we go. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Wasn't expecting that. All right. Okay, we got a little bit of invisibility here. Of course, we got to save Dewey. There we go. Oop. All right. Get him. Let's move along here. Oh, actually, I don't think I want to go that way. I think at first I have to go up here. Of course, that was an ice cream cone that I already passed up because I was going up. But um, basically, uh, we have to find the treasure and then we come back a little bit later because to get back into the mines, uh, you have to have a key. So you have to do the stages somewhat in order, but not necessarily entirely in order. So, oh, there we go. There's a beagle boy right there, the old 8-bit beagle boy. Get through. Ah. All right, let's go up here. Oop. Uh, let's see, I think I go to the right. Yep, there's a hidden wall here with a mirror, and I think I think I go to the left. It's been so long since I've played this. Yep, nope, I don't think that was right. So yeah, like I said, there's magic mirrors that take you all the way through to different areas of the mansion, and you have to do them somewhat in the right fashion, of course, otherwise you're just going to be stuck here forever. Ah, come on. There we go. Ah, right, screw it. Oi, oi, oi. There we go. That's what I wanted to do. It's really weird using the Xbox controller to play this game. Um, the, the controls are not as fluid as you might think. All right, so we went to the left last time. Let's go to the right. There we go. And if I recall, this is Magicka Dispel, who's the boss here. <coughs> here we go. Alright, so she's going to swoop down and we got to jump on her head here. Oh, I'm gonna watch out for the thunderbolts. Alright, here we go. Come on, Magicka, what you got? Ah, oh, come on. Alright, I think I hit her twice. Should have two more hit points left. Ah, nope. Ah! Oh, come on. Oh, wow. There we go. There's a good hit. Oh, come on. Jeez. Okay. Seems like I'm just going to be stuck in a loop here. Come on. 
There we go. There's a good hit. You hit her, and then you gotta avoid these little things. There we go. It's a good hit. No. There we go. It's kind of cheating to use this rewind feature. It makes this game a little bit easier than it should be. But I mean, I, I'm sure you guys don't want to see me go through the whole thing again, so. I'm okay with using it. Otherwise, I'd have to just, you know, claim my shame and do it again. All right, let's see what we got here. Total money, we're coming out with 2,475,000, so not too bad. Uh, the mines, like I said, we can't use it yet until we go back to Transylvania, so I could do it again, um, or I can skip ahead to the Himalayas or the moon. Um, let's go ahead and do the mines real quick just to get that last key. But I don't I don't know if necessarily I'm going to be able to go past it yet. Uh, you do have to speak to, I think this is Huey, if I remember right. So we go to Transylvania. And this is a wild goose chase to find the skeleton key to get through, but uh, spoiler alert, it's right over here. It's not too hard to find. Not too difficult to find. But boom, there we go. We got the skeleton key. And back to the mine. Alright, so we'll go back to the mines. I don't know why I bother to get those diamonds. Who cares? Here we go. And boom, we're through. Alright, so... Now we've got to get through the mines, and there's like a Goblin King, I think, is the one who's the, the boss of this area. Now, one of the interesting things is that in the DuckTales Remastered version, well, let's, let's put it this way. So in this, in the 8-bit version, there is a kind of a, a shortcut to bypass virtually the entire level. It's over by Mrs. Beakley, who, if you've ever seen the show, she's kind of like a a maid who basically cooks for the family and stuff like that. I mean, remember, Scrooge is a rich dude, so he can afford it. He's like the Donald Trump of Disney. Um, but basically, uh, you know, you can bypass like half the entire level right here. So I'm going to try to do it and see if I can make it. But basically, all you have to do is you have to bounce on these little heads of these ducks here. What's up, dear Jenna? See that you're online. Now you're famous because you're on one of my videos. All right, here we go. Hidden treasure. And these don't really have anything to do with the game, per se. It's just something that's worth money. Alright, so let's go here. Uh, I believe if I go down, that takes me away. So I don't want to do that. Nah, I don't want to get that hit. Alright, here we go. Whoa, wasn't expecting that. There we go. Okay, so here's the Goblin King, and of course I wanted that ice cream, but I missed it. This guy is super easy. He just rolls around, rolls around. Sometimes he goes left, sometimes he goes right. You never really know, but you just gotta be ready to pounce on him. As you can see, I'm jumping, just anticipating him coming right at me, but that's it. That's all it is for the mines. It's pretty simple. As long as you take that shortcut. Otherwise, you have to go all the way down, go across, go up, go down again, and then climb up the uh, the chain link, which is what I basically skipped from going down there just a few seconds ago. So that's it for the mines. Pretty simple and easy. Let's go ahead and see what we've got. We got, wow, we're getting quite a bit of money off of this one. $4,640,000. Pretty cool. So we got the Himalayas and the moon left. Let's go ahead and go right to the Himalayas. And I think we fight the Yeti in this one. Pretty sure. It makes sense, doesn't it? Yeti and, of course, the snow. Or maybe it's the Imbobble Snowman. Who, you, who knows? All right, here we go. Get over here, you rabbit. Waskaway wabbit. Ah, come on. Ugh. Now, of course, another interesting thing about this game, if you've ever played Mega Man, it probably seems pretty similar, right? Well, that's, of course, because they used the Mega Man engine to make this game. So, uh, if you've ever played Mega Man, it kind of has a similar feel to it. Uh, you'll go through a bunch of different bosses at the end, and all that kind of cool stuff. All right, so you think that there's nothing here, right? Well, whoop. It, now you know there's a little hidden trick here. <laughs> All right, so we go down. Here's Launchpad and go back to Duckburg, but now nah, we ain't gonna do that. 
Now, of course, we could go for the hidden treasure, which was down that other way, but eh. Eh, I just want to kind of get through it. The music is so catchy in this. I don't know who did it, but like the moon theme is like one of the most famous 8-bit video game track musics, aside from like the Mario theme, uh, that most people just like go nuts over, and like you can do... Like, there's so many remixes available for it. Like, whoever did the DuckTales remastered... Ah, come on. Whoever did the DuckTales remastered version did an excellent job of recreating it. And, uh, you know, it's a pretty great game if you uh, want to play the this game in a more modern style. I mean, can't beat that. Uh-oh. Oh, Ooh, make it... Oh, look at that. All right, so here we go. Uh, yep, looks like the Yeti is here. And basically, you just have to pounce on his head, I guess five times. But essentially, he, um, he'll he run over, or he'll jump once into the middle. That's when you have to hit him. And then he'll pounce away and then hit the wall, and then some of these snowballs fall down. Boom. Alright, there we go. Pounce over. Boop. And he's going to do it one more time. Oh, I thought I had one more hit on him. Cool. And uh, so we've got the, the uh, Himalayas. Now we get to go to the moon where we get to meet Gizmo Duck. And basically what we're doing is we're going to go up and we're going to find the treasure and get the key. And then once we get the key, we're going to blast open the moon and basically go into the moon boss. And then after that, uh, we get to go to Transylvania again for the final boss. So let's go ahead and get going. Here's the moon. This is my favorite theme. Uh, favorite music in any NES game. Maybe Wizards and Warriors tops that, but I'm going to do my best to kind of let the music kind of set the mood because I love it so much. It's such a great track. Such a great track, I love it. So a beat, so much going on. All right, here we go. So here's the key. Key to the UFO. All right, so now we gotta go over and we get to get Launchpad McQuex. I believe we have to get his blaster. I think that's what the actual narrative is. All right, so we don't need to go back to Duckburg. I don't necessarily know why Launchpad is really in the game. I mean, you don't ever really need to, if I remember right. There's no real reason you ever have to go back to Duckburg. I mean, I guess if you're stuck, it, but I mean, there's, there's no need because, I mean, you're collecting money, which is great, but it's like, it's, it's a secondary thing. Um, you don't spend it on anything, so there's real no reason to actually go to um, Duckburg. I mean, I guess if you're about to die or something, but... I mean, I don't know. There's just no reason for it. I think it's just because they had to put him in the in the game somehow, just because he's part of the show, I guess. I don't know. But yeah, I've never had a reason to go back to Duckburg other than the uh, the mines, but it does it for you automatically. Like, it'd be different like if you have to go back to Duckburg, but you have to find Launchpad first to go back. I guess that would make more sense, but I don't know. If there's a reason for it, by all means, let me know in the comments section below. Alright, let's go. Alright, so now we're going to go outside of the UFO here. And it's a hidden treasure area. I mean, I'm in the area, I might as well grab it, so. Alright, here we go. Bounce off the aliens. Yeah, get that 8-bit platforming action here. Oh, jeez. Hmm. Surprised that didn't actually hurt. Usually these things hurt, so. Alright, here we go. Hidden treasure. And I'm kind of stuck. All right, there we go. Hmm. 
I guess I'm just hitting it right at the right spot to where it doesn't hurt. Whatever. Alright. Now let's go down. And I think I have to go here. Yeah, the key. So I have to go to the key to get the, uh, the contraption here. It's like a control panel or something. Actually, if we hit the start button... Yeah, remote control, it's essentially what it is. And basically it allows Gizmo Duck to blast open the, uh, the area so that we can get into the moon and fight the moon boss, which is a giant rat who's guarding the green cheese. So, all right, we're gonna go down. Oh, geez, forgot about him. Yeah, like most 8-bit games, essentially, uh, if you uh, leave the uh, screen uh, the enemies will respawn again, so like if I go back, there he is again. Uh, so we're going to go down and we're going to go to the right. And we're going to get to the gizmo duck. Oh jeez. There we go. It's so, it's so nice to play like one of these old school platformers again. I mean, I just love these types of games. Let's see if there's anything over here like food. No. Probably food down here though. Usually there's food before the boss. There we go. Some ice cream. Weird food choices. I mean, they got pies and uh, ice cream. I guess that's what Mrs. Beakley would uh, would uh, make. But here we go. See those Beagle Brothers? Ah, I don't want to take that hit. Here we go. In the interest of... Ah, screw it. I'm sure I'll be fine. Say, in the interest of not having to do the whole thing over again and make it more difficult, I'm just going to... Oh, jeez. Here we go. Usually there's a, a little delay. Oh, man. Come on. Here we go. Wow. That was bad. There we go. I don't know why, why I took so many hits there right at the beginning of that boss fight, but... All right, so that's it. So we've gone through the Amazon, we've gone through Transylvania, we've gone through the mines, we've gone through the moon now, and uh, we've gone through the Himalayas. So uh, that's everything. So now we're going to go back to Transylvania uh, to defeat uh, Duck, I think is his name. I don't re quite remember, but I think it's Count Duck. All land clear. Haha, -ha, if you want to get back the treasures, come to Dracula Duck Manor. So that's his name, Dracula Duck. All right, so now we have to find Dracula Duck. And if I recall, I have to go through this mirror. Through this one, I think? No, nope. <laughs> just put me right back at the start. All right, I'm not gonna do that again because that makes no sense, obviously, if there's a loop. Uh, I believe I can go up here, though. Yeah, this is another hidden area shortcut. A lot of these levels have this. They have, like, false walls or different things that you can do, but, uh, this is one of the hidden ones here in the Transylvania uh, level. Alright, let's see if I can remember where I'm going here. I need to go down to like a minecart area if I recall. Hmm. There we go. Up here maybe? No. Nope. Actually, yeah, I think I go through this mirror. Now... Uh, yeah, so this is going to take me down here, and if I remember right, there's going to be two mirrors that I have to go through, but I don't remember which one it is. I want to say it's the right one. I'm not, I don't recall. Let's see. Actually, no. Wait, that just threw me into a loop. Hmm. Hmm. All right. Uh, maybe I go through this one? No. Alright, now I'm a little confused. I definitely, I apparently do not remember the game at all as much as I thought. Uh, I know this is a false wall here. Oh, here you go. This is what I remember. Alright, so is it left or right? Go right. See what happens. Yep, we're in the right area. Alright. Yeah, bye, ghosts. Okay, so now with Count Dracula, he's going to basically let out a bird and I have to, or a bat, and I have to bounce off the bat and then hit him. And I got to do that pretty quick. 
The interesting thing about this one, or the more difficult part, is if I bounce too early, the bat flies up higher, so I kind of have to be on the ground a little bit to let it know to come to the ground. There we go. Yeah, I got a hit there, at least. I don't necessarily want to take that hit, though. Ah. There we go. Ah. Come on, come on. One more hit and I'm dead. I don't want to take the hit, though. Oh, probably shouldn't have done that. Should have rewound. Ah, oh, come on. Boom. Oh, come on. There we go. Alright. Got greedy. Let's see if I can get that bat. There we go. Like I said, using Rewind is such a cheating mechanism in this game. But, uh, alright, so that's it for Count Dracula. So now what I need to do is I have to beat Magicka Dispel all the way to the top and jump on the treasure first. It's so simple and easy on the easy mode, but all you literally have to do is just climb a rope. In DuckTales Remastered, you're climbing out of a cave or a mine or something like that, like in a volcano. And you actually have to do a bunch of platforming tricks. So this, you'll see how simple this is. I could do this blindfolded, it's so simple. And you jump off and bam, there we go. And that's it, that's DuckTales 1 on the NES as it originally came out. So we're going to go back uh, to Duckburg and see how much money we got. And here we are, bouncing on the treasure. Such amazing uh, finales. Duck Press. Scrooge remains the richest duck in the world. Daring explorer Scrooge McDuck was found in the five legend five leg and found has found the five legendary treasures. And they don't give you enough time to read it. Oh wait. Uh, I can rewind. So let's try it again. <laughs> Daring explorer Scrooge McDuck has found the five legendary treasures, making him the richest duck in the world. Congratulations. Total money eight million six hundred and ninety thousand. Or it's 8,069,000. Either way. Hooray, Uncle Scrooge. We're glad you found the treasures. But don't forget, we helped too. Of course you did. Where did you help exactly? Hmm. I don't think you really helped that much. But alright, whatever. I'll give it to you. But that's it. That's all there is to this game here. Right, lads. I couldn't have done it without you. I really am the richest duck in the world. End. All right, guys, well, that was DuckTales number one on the NES, and today we played it on the Xbox One version of the Disney Afternoon Collection. Uh, there's six games in this entire series. I'm going to be uploading a new one every single day this week. So that's going to be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. That's going to be the sixth one. And we're going to play the next one in the series, which is going to be Chippendales Rescue Rangers 1. So it should be a lot of fun. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit that little bell for the notifications. Make sure to comment in the comments sections if you have any suggestions for other games that you'd like to bring to play. Or maybe what was your favorite memory about DuckTales 1. Love to hear that from you as well. So that's going to do it for this episode. I'll see you in the next video, guys. And thank you so much for watching.